so this is the first unit the first unit is about two things law of demand and elasticity of demand but before knowing what is law of demand or what is elasticity of demand let's go through what is demand and then go on to what are the other laws and elasticity cool so first thing yeah what is the meaning of demand right demand refers to the quantity of a good or a service that the consumers are willing and are able to purchase at various price during a given period of time so the statement is telling us four different things so it refers to the quantity to what is demand refers to quantity of some good or service that the consumers who are the con who do we call consumers buyers okay so if your father is buying you uh lipstick is your father the consumer yes sir most of the person who is consuming it is called as consumer lovely now yeah but then who is your father then sir is a customer sir lovely exactly so the person who buys the product of the company is the customer and the person who uses that product for self own consumption or whatever purpose is the consumer Ten right like the the uh, parents buy uska kya hai napkins or pampers and all that stuff for kids right so the parents are the customers of the company and the kids are the consumers of the company got it yeah so the the demand refers to the quantity of a good or service that the consumers are willing first thing what should be they having to be a willing and able ability to purchase what to purchase this good or services at various prices during a given period of time so during the given period of time it might go through different prices and at every different price at every various price how many of the consumers are willing and able to purchase the good or service right so it's like um i need a lamborghini car okay so there is a willingness to there is a willingness for me to buy a lamborghini car yes or no yes sir but am i able to buy that car i don't have that much money to buy a lamborghini car so i am not the consumer i am not the person who is wanting who is able to who is able to buy a car and that is why i am not a part of the demand so demand is considered as that quantity which the consumer is will is willing and has the ability to buy cool so two things to love what is that willingness i i want that thing right and the ability is the capacity to buy that thing right so two things sum up to the demand quantity got right? it so demand is always the quantity it's the numbers pages or any units right so that which how much is the quantity that the consumers are willing and able to purchase during a given period of time that is the demand of a certain product or a service so demand a so willingness and ability but there is also one more thing let's see see demand in economics is something more than the desire to purchase demand is something more than just the desire to purchase though a desire is one element of it right a beggar for instance may desire food but due to lack of means to purchase this his demand is not effective he also has a willingness for food right but his ability lack of ability to or means to purchase this does not keep his demand effective so his willingness will not count in the demand concept clear yes sir love so thus effective demand for a thing depends on the desire yes the willingness the means to purchase the ability and the willingness to use those means for that purchase read this third point first thing is the desire that is the willingness second thing is the means to purchase that is the ability that we have seen already but what is this thing willingness to use those means for that purchase give me an example I told you I wanted a Lamborghini car, right? So I have a desire of buying a Lamborghini car, and assume the car costs one crore fifty lakhs, okay? And for God's sake, I have one crore fifty lakhs as my wealth. Now, 
I have the desire to buy. I have the desire to buy that car. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes. Do I have the ability to buy that car? Yes, sir. Lovely. But am I willing to use all of that one crore of my wealth to just buy this car? Or no, sir. Exactly right. That is my wealth. Do I have to run my life? I can't sell all my assets and get all of them together and buy this car of one crore fifty lakhs. What I'm going to eat? Where I'm going to stay? Right. So it is not only just the desire and the ability, but it's also the willingness to use those money or willingness to use the ability to satisfy this desire. Here, so once for any product or any good or any service, these three things come into picture. Then the goods or the the quant the goods or the service demand is said to be effective. Here, so a desire, ability, and Willingness to use this ability to satisfy the desire; these three things. So, this effective demand of a thing depends on desire, means to purchase, and the willingness to use these means for that purchase. Clear? Understood the meaning of demand? Yes, sir. Lovely. So, next time when I ask you or anyone asks you or you are in a position to explain demand, please explain this. Clear? Or you could just say demand refers to the quantity of goods or services that the consumers consumers are willing and able to purchase, <laughs> or or this is a better example. No? So effective demand refers for a thing depends on its desire, means to purchase, and the willingness to use those means for that purchase. Clear? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Lovely. Can we? So what is the next thing that we have? So what determines demand? What do you what do you mean by determined? Any one of you? What is this? What is this? Dude, you you don't know what is this? Phone. Yeah, it's a phone. Phone. Right? It's a phone. How did you determine that this is a phone? By seeing it. By seeing the features of this thing. Right. So, did the, what did you just do when I when you said you determined you saw the features of that thing and how this thing is made up of, and then you said this is phone, and then you determined that this is phone. Right. So, what did you do? You saw the features and what this thing is made up of. Right or wrong? So, the same way you determine demand also. So, what are the features of this thing that you can say, "Ha, huh, this is demand," or what is this demand made up of? So that you can determine that, yeah, this is a demand, right? Like, like when you see a tree, yes, there's a branch that's wood, and there's leaves, and there's fruits or flowers or whatever that thing is, and it has roots into the earth. Yeah, this thing is tree. How did you de determine that tree? Its features and how is it made up of, right? So that is how you determine something, and that is how you also determine demand by seeing what are its features or what does it. comprise of what makes what is demand made up of okay so the first thing the demand is made up of is the price of the commodity yes or no so i bought this phone at 15000 rupees right when i bought this phone at 15000 rupees one of the reasons i bought this phone at 15000 rupees was i only had 15000 rupees had this phone be 20000 rupees will i be its effective demand Had this no right? Had this phone be ten thousand rupees? Had this phone be ten thousand rupees? Would my demand be effective for this product? I had fifteen thousand. Yes, sir. Yes. yes, right. So the first thing that determines the demand of a commodity is the price of the commodity. Whether the consumer is willing to buy that product at that price or not. As simple as that. Let's see. Citrus paribus, other things being equal. So, what is citrus paribus? Other things being this. The meaning of this word is this. Whenever someone is stating citrus paribus, he means to say that. Oh, okay. There are a lot of things that different. would determine this thing, but keeping all of the things constant, let's just take this thing. Okay, assuming all the other things are equal, and taking this thing as a variable, right? That keeps on changing. So the price of the commodity 
the demand for a commodity is inversely related to its price right it implies that a rise in the price of a commodity brings about a fall in the quantity purchased and vice versa don't you do you guys agree with that a rise in the price of a commodity brings a fall in the quantity purchased of that commodity does it so does it happen like that yes sir yeah right and if the price of a commodity is falling down the quantity purchase of that product will increase so there need two things now the price of the product and the quantity purchased of that product right now so the price and so that is the first thing that determines any products or services demand first thing is the price of the own product the next thing is price of related commodities what are the what are the commodities related to this related to this phone any phone the other related com com commodities to this phone i would give an example a charger earphones earphones anything else um this case the case right yeah ha uh, back cases yeah the back case so not all so, so that see so i was thinking of buying an apple iphone but then i realized that dude if i buy an apple iphone i have to buy all the other things i have to buy the ear airpods cuz they don't have the the new iphones just don't have the uh, earphone jack uh, i'll have to buy a new the, the 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 charger is even more costlier than a normal charger if a charger goes wrong i'll have to spend even more money and and all the subscriptions are not available on a apple right the apple charges are different so if i had to buy the apple it's not just the cost of the apple but the other products that i require to use that phone also or use that product right so how much is the price of the other products so that will also determine the android charger is cheap man it's like 1500 or 1600 or something but the apple charger is not 1600 it's 3000 or something like that right so if i have, if i lose a charger which the price of the product is determining the demand or not the price of the related product not just the product right so the second thing that determines the demand of any good or service is the price of its related commodities so there are two related commodities for any product one comes under the category of complementary goods and the other comes under the com category of competing goods complementary goods competing goods or we know as them as substitutes any of you play any sports here any sports any three of you yes sir which sport da throw ball throw ball did you play it professionally no okay any other do you have sub is that a, it's not a team sport right it's a spin sport Team it team. is a team sport only, sir. Oh, it is a team sport only. Throw ball, is it? Yes, sir. So, yes. how many members are in the team? Seven members. Total. So, it is actually seven members who play, and uh -huh. there will be total of uh, three substitutes or four substitutes. Oh, you have substitutes in a team, huh? Yes, sir. So, what are those substitutes? If not you, he'll pay, no? He'll play, no? Yes, He's yes, also sir. competing for your position. Just yes. that you got selected to the team. right so these are substitutes are competing people for the same position and complementary are uh complementary goods are uh so like in cricket there is someone called an opening batsman the top order player the middle order player the lower order player and the oh. defenders or and the other bowlers which don't who don't bat well or or if you take football there is forward players midfield players and called defenders and the goalkeeper right so the goalkeeper the defenders the midfield players and the and the forward players are complementary they're complementing their skills to win the game right so a a, a, a for a, for a midfield service is important for the forward to go and kick the goal right so these are complementary he should be there for me to perform well but with the substitute if i don't perform well he'll take my place clear so once you are in the track everyone is complimented and your and the competing goods are the ones who are not on the track 
right so the same thing goes with goods complementary goods are those goods which are consumed together or simultaneously are those goods which are consumed together or simultaneously for example tea and sugar tea and sugar are consumed simultaneously so tea is a different good sugar is a different good and these two goods when because they are consumed simultaneously we call them we call tea and sugar we call tea and sugar complementary goods lovely so a fall in okay and the other example is automobile and petrol the car and the price of the car and the price of the petrol right so have you uh, have you ever heard your dad or any of your cousins or anyone speaking dude should i buy a petrol car petrol engine or a diesel engine yes sir yes sir right because the price of the petrol or diesel will affect my decision on which car i have to buy right because why because should i is petrol costier or is diesel costier which will incur me higher cost to run this business so to drive the car right so so depending on your preference this thing up so automobile and petrol petrol and automobile go parallel to each other right they consume together so petrol and automobile are also petrol in the car the bike automobile is a bike or a car or whatever thing that uses petrol right and these two are complementary goods pen and ink so without ink is the do you call anything like a, a pen or an effective pen so the same thing goes with pen and ink so these things which are used these two different things which are used parallelly or simultaneously right are called complementary goods and you have tea and sugar as an example automobile and the fuel as an example and pen and ink as an example that we have been using since age old concepts okay the phone and the charger is a new concept the phone and the charger is a are complementary goods then a fall in the price of petrol driven cars a fall in the price of petrol driven cars would lead to a rise in the demand for petrol so what do you see the if the cars which are using petrol as fuel the price of the car, petrol cars have fallen down people will drive people will purchase more of petrol cars right and then if people are purchasing more of petrol cars what will happen to the demand of petrol it will increase increase as compared to diesel right so that is what is the relationship between the price of the pr price of the complement like price of both the complementary goods right if the price of the good as uh, if the price of the main product increase or uh, increases or uh, yeah what happens if the price of the main product increases what price of the car increases then the demand for fuel or petrol price of the price of the petrol car increases the demand for petrol decreases and if the price of the petrol car decreases the demand for the petrol the demand for the petrol increases so price of a different product is affecting the demand of a different product altogether price of a pet car is affecting the demand of petrol price of the pen is affecting the demand of the ink right or price of the tea is affecting the demand of the sugar cool so price of one product is affecting the demand of another product altogether cool in the previous case the price of the product the, the price of the product is determining the demand of its own product right the demand and the price are the same product in the price of the product determinant but here price of one product is de determining the demand of some other product and what are these called goods called related commodities related commodities yeah and and if they are consumed simultaneously they are called they called complementary goods yes so similarly a fall in the price of fountain pens will cause a rise in the demand for ink the reverse will be the case when the price of a complement rises when the price of a complement rises the demand for a demand for the complement falls down v and that there's a we know that there's an inverse relationship between the price of its complement and the demand for a good so these are the two products so one thing one product is the complement right and the other product is the good 
All of you know Kannada? Yes, sir. No. Yes, sir. I don't know Kannada. I'm sorry. All of you know Telugu? Yes, sir. Oh. Now you said yes, is it? Yeah, yes, sir. Now you. Nidha also knows Telugu? No, sir, but I can understand. No, no one of you know Hindi. No, sir. No, so no, no Hindi in our class. Okay. So, so this was. Does we see? Let's just take. It. Yeah. So what is the bottom line for complementary goods? There is an relationship between. the price of the complement and the demand for the good so if the good is the car the complement is the petrol if the good is the if anything can happen right if the price of the petrol is also increasing then the demand for car petrol cars will go down right or if the price of the petrol car is increasing the demand for the car, petrol would go down so there's always one good and its component the price of the component will affect the demand of the good as simple as that you decide what is a complement or what is a good okay yeah love and then we have competing goods competing goods or substitutes are two commodities are two commodities which sub you want which satisfy the same want and can be used uh, now you Yes, sir. Are you sitting in a room where people are around? No, sir. Okay, but is it not people talking in and around of you, and you are being marked with the green signal that you have only been speaking all this while? So it's if possible try coming to a room. So the rest, it's not that, or just close the door in case you're already near. Okay. Love you. Competing goods or substitutes are two commodities which satisfy the same want and can be used with ease in place of one another. Two different commodities that satisfy the same want, right? That's that two different commodities that satisfy the same want and can be used with ease in place of one another. Okay. Uh, did you any any of them buy batteries? Batteries for remote or batteries for wall clock. Yeah. Right? I, don't, I don't even give a damn which company the battery is. Just give me that fat and thick battery for clock. Right? He he gives ever ready. I only know ever ready's name of battery. I don't even know any other name. Is there any other other company's batteries except for ever ready? See. Duracell. Sorry. Duracell. Yeah, Duracell. Right. So Duracell battery and ever ready batteries are. substitutes i don't mind yeah whatever battery is there whatever battery you can get your hands on first give me that battery that's fine right so both can be used with such an ease for the same reason and they can be replaced so easily gotcha so for example tea and coffee here he gave tea and sugar as complementary goods now tea and coffee are competing goods if not tea i'll drink coffee Right. So the money I can spend will either go for tea or either go for coffee, and depends on which satisfies me the most. Right. And so many other factors. So, for example, tea and coffee, ink pen and ball pen are substitutes for each other and can be used in place of one another easily. Now, a fall in the price of one citrus fibers again means now keep the others constant and only. figure on the price of the commodity and the demand for the good okay price of the substitute and the demand for the good okay here good and substitute there good and complement okay so a fall in price of one leads to the fall in quantity demanded of its substitutes so fall in the price of goods what is it telling a fall in the price of one leads to fall in the quantity demanded of its substitutes if the price of tea is decreasing what happens demand for coffee tea is increasing no at the same time with the price decrease in with the price decrease in tea the demand for coffee also 
decreases. The price of the ball pen decreases, the demand for ink pen decreases. The price of the ball pen increases, the demand for ink pen increases. And what is demand, demand, demand? The quantity purchased. Huh? The demand refers to the quantity purchased, quantity of that good and service that is ready to be bought, that the consumer is willing and able to yeah. and you and is willing to use that means to pay for that product. Right? So this is the demand. So price of one product is affecting the demand for its food. Right? And then so if the price of the tea falls, people will try to substitute it for coffee. If the price of the tea falls, people will try to substitute it for coffee. Substitute tea for coffee and the demand for more demand more of tea and less of coffee. That is the demand for tea will rise and that of coffee will fall. So therefore, there is a direct or a positive relationship between the price of the substitutes and demand for a product. There is an inverse relationship between the price of the complement and the demand for a food. And there is a direct relationship between the, the price of the substitute and the demand for the product, the demand for the food. Clear? Yes, sir. So, uh, just a moment. Yeah. What is the rule for... What is the rule for complementary? How does this affect the complementary and the good? It is inversely. Oh yeah, it is an inverse relationship exactly. And uh, there, uh, there is an inverse relationship so between the price of of its complement and the demand for a good. Okay, so there is an inverse relationship between. Between one, the price of the complement and, and, the dim and the demand of the good. Lovely. The demand for the good. Correct, Hesra. <laughs> what do you say? Yeah, did I tell it correctly? In Tamil, it is correct as well. But what is it? Tanna, the correct, correct agi de. Correct agi de. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct agi de. <laughs> yeah. So the rule of complementary goods is that it is an inverse relationship between the price of the complement and the demand for the good. And what? How? What is the response? Price of the complement increases, the uh -huh. demand of the good decreases. The demand of the good decreases. Lovely. Decreases. And if the uh, price of the complement decreases, the demand of the good increases. Demand for the Good increases or decreases? It increases. Lovely. Cool. And a few examples of complementary goods. And don't give me those examples. And... Don't give me those examples. <laughs> Try to give me those examples. All three of you. I want one, one example from each of you. The and... socks and shoe. Wow. Ah, socks and shoe. Nice. Come on, one more. Two more. Bad boy. Bat and ball, lovely man. You are a genius. Yeah, Bhavani. Halo. <laughs> it's Halo. Yes, sir. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello. Lulu, sir. Hello. Lulu. Lulu. H E L L U, no? Hello. Yes, sir. Bhavani, hello. <laughs> what do you say tomorrow you'll hello? Nale hello. Sorry? Nale hello. Yeah, nale hello. So there was no, a friend sir. of mine 
any question that i ask her she's like nala healthy something like that this is like yeah nala healthy or nala healthy or something like that healthy sorry healthy nala healthy nala healthy i'll tell tomorrow yeah now bhavani tell me the example new example book and pen phone and amazon and netflix membership no sir dude amazon and netflix are complementary these are competing goods amazon and netflix no are what are complementary so you use netflix with amazon no no <laughs> it is competing sir exactly and what is com- complementary with amazon our phone or the laptop laptop or device with the membership what what if what can i do if i have that small nokia phone is amazon complimentary good for that no sir so yeah sir yeah one minute i'm getting a immediate call so please sure man you just have to mute yourself and talk and come back not talk yeah in the meantime let's complete the rule for Completing goods. Completing goods. Why so sad? Or was it the signal? Yeah, it's the same point. So, how many points did we get in this? No. So we had something like this. So da da da. It is an inverse relationship. And then we spoke about this. And then we spoke about response. And then we spoke about examples. Okay, ma. So the same goes with here. So. What is the kind of relationship they have? Competing goods. Competing goods have direct relationship. Lovely, da. Direct relationship. Nice. And what happens with the? How is the relation with the price? When the price increases, no. with price. Yeah, they have the direct relationship between. Between the price. the price of the competing good. The price of the. Competing good and the demand for the and the demand for the good. Yes. Okay. Nice. So what happens? What is the response? When the price increases, price of a competing good increases. When the price decreases, the demand increases. Okay. Price, price of the goods increases. The demand, demand also the increases. The good demand, demand for the good also. Demand for the good increases. Increases. Lovely. And the other way around. The price of the competing goods decreases. The demand for the good decreases. Nice, Nokia. Price of the competing good decreases. The demand the good, for the good decreases. Decreases, yeah. It's direct. If this is also decreasing, this is also decreasing. Increasing, increasing. Cool. Yes, sir. Love. And come on, new examples. Hello. Android and Apple <laughs> phones. Wow. Android and Apple phones. Lovely. Nice. So, sorry. Yeah. Next, who said that? Bhavani. Bhavani is first this time. Yeah. Navya and Nida. Nida is in a call. Navya. No, no, I am not in a call, sir. Sorry. I am not in a call, sir. Oh, you said. You no, said sir. That? Sir, I was in a call, Bhavani. I was in a call, sir. Sorry, sorry. Dude, you guys did not open your cameras. Only black screen is talking for me. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Nida and Navya. Sneakers and slippers. Sneakers and slippers. You wear sneakers and slippers for you either wear sneakers or slippers for a party. Either. You yeah. either wear. You go to you go wear slippers and go for a party. Those are sandals. 
yeah but slippers so sneakers and see it's like for the same use you can use the both of the products either of the products right yeah you can use sneakers for party but you can use can you will you use slippers for the party computer or laptop is it laptop not a computer computer or computer and laptop is a different thing as well laptop and computer are different things yeah isn't laptop a computer too or are you want to be saying desktop desktop okay yeah so there is desktop and laptop laptop so you understood that sandal example sandal is true yeah. sneakers and sandal can be used for same use but sneaker and slipper will not be used for same use yes, i can't wear sneakers and go to washroom right i can wear slippers and go to washroom yes sir love so they satisfying the same use come on love you mm. yes love you one minute come beating rules fast we can move on Coke and Pepsi. <laughs> lovely, da, lovely. Coke and Pepsi, right? Nice. Chicken or mutton? <laughs> Biryani or pizza? Yes, sir. Those were the two options we had in the bar, right? Yes, sir. Lovely. So nice. So let's go to the the next part. No. So, so, the, so until now, what were we learning? We were learning that what determines demand, and what is determine when? How do we determine? We either see the features of that good, or how the good is made up of, or how the thing is made up of, right? So, same way, demand is made up of all of these things. So, there's influence of the price of the commodity to make a demand for a for a demand. for a product's demand to be effective there is an influence of price of related commodities on a price of product right and then what or on the demand of product also and then what else also impacts the demand of a product is is income of the income consumer of the consumer this is where the ability factor comes right yes sir yeah. so other things being equal what is other things being equal status parameters price demand and things yeah no i i was asking what is the meaning of these other things what was the other word for other things being equal what is the substitute for other things being equal being constant status parameters answer you what is the substitute for these terms come status parameters yeah that's what i was saying so among the other things being equal the demand for a commodity depends upon the money income of the consumer money income of the consumer the purchasing power of the consumer is determined by the level of his income the level of his income is determining the purchasing power of the consumer so in most cases the larger the average the money income of the consumer is the larger is the quantity demanded of a particular good right so the nature of relationship between income and quantity demanded depends upon the need before this you understood these two things so what will the income of the consumer determine it will determine the purchasing power purchasing power exactly and we've seen this word very often what is this thing the money income money income money income what is money income? how do we differentiate money income from income do you have any idea let me tell you okay. so assume you get a job in a company and the salary that they pay you to your bank account is 50000 rupees okay now apart from this 50000 rupees that is being credited into your bank every month you also get a benefit of sudexo coupons worth 5000 rupees 
Okay. So what are, what do we already have? Yeah. So what do we already have? Uh, cash payment of how much is the cash payment? Fifty thousand. Right. And then Sudexo, you know Sudexo, right? Do you guys know Sudexo? Sudexo, Sudexo, Sudexo is like uh, coupons. Okay. So I'll give you that coupon if you any uh, so in the canteen or any shop if people are accepting Sodexo, you can just give this coupon instead of money or instead of that cash got it Sodexo Hi, is, right the lunch coupons anywhere Sodexo is accepting you can give this coupon and take the money so Sodexo of coupons are spelling C O U P O N S yeah of rupees 5000 okay and you are also given a car and a driver for it every day okay whose value or whose cost for one month is 10000 okay a car and a driver okay. the rent for the car and the driver per month is 10000 so if how much is the total salary 50000 Fifty thousand. What about these two things? Well, the employer is not paying you this. Sixty-five thousand. Anything that the employer is paying the employee is the salary, no? Yes, sir. So what is the total salary? Rupees. Sixty-five. Yeah. So what is this income? Sixty-five. Fifty thousand. Income is sixty-five thousand, and money income is. Fifty thousand. Exactly. So understood. What is money income? Yes, sir. Lovely. So the money that he has with which he can buy things, right? If you if you ask him sixty thousand, he does not have sixty thousand because he gets paid fifty thousand. The ten thousand and the five thousand are benefits, right? But they also have value and will be part of his income. But it is not considered as money income. And you must have heard of uh, this thing, right? By when people say. Uh, the salary is twenty five thousand, but I take home twenty two thousand or something. Can you this? I take home this much. Okay, so this fifty thousand is a take. Home. How much do you take home in money? Uh, where were we? Yeah. So in most cases, the larger the average money income of the consumer is, the larger the quantity of the demand of a particular thing. So higher income, higher purchasing power. So higher purchasing power gets higher quantity demand. Got it? If I have ten thousand rupees, I'll buy five kgs of rice. If I have twenty thousand rupees, I'll I'll buy ten kgs of rice. Right? If I have five thousand rupees, I'll ten kgs of rice. I won't eat. But in in childhood, imagine if you had ten rupees, we'll buy one five star chocolate. If you have twenty rupees, I'll buy two five star chocolates. Right? If I had one rupee, I would buy one eclairs. If I had two rupees, I would buy two eclairs. Right, so the income increases, the demand for a commodity also increases. Increases. What is this? See, the nature of relationship between income and quantity demanded depends on the nature of the consumer goods and services. Yeah, in the previous competing goods and complementary goods, the nature was like this the relationship was direct and indirect. No? But the nature yes, of the relationship between income and consumer goods, income and the goods is different. Between income and quantity income and quantity dependent. Dependent, sorry. Dependent. Yeah. So the relationship between income and quantity demanded is dependent on something else. What is that something else? So what is the nature of the good that you're talking about? Right? So nature, most, of the, most of the consumption goods fall into the category of normal goods. The rice that we buy, the fruits that we buy, the vegetables that we buy, the, the clothes that I buy. 
right? So most of the consumption goods that we are consuming or having the benefit of, right? Most of the consumption goods fall into the category of normal goods. The these are demanded in increasing quantities as consumer income increases. Like my clothes, my income increases, my shopping bill increases. My income decreases, my shopping bill decreases. No. So, in case of normal goods, the relation is like this. How is the relation? Sir. Yeah. Sir, there is a disturbance, sir. From my side. No. Somebody is talking, sir. Okay. Either Navya or Nida. Can no, sir. No disturbance from my side. It's from. Navya, can you just mute it once? Yeah. Navya, someone is in your family talking loudly from the other room. <laughs> Sir, actually, there are, my relatives are there in my home Saturday. Ah. They are having some function. You, you are having function and attending class also. Nice, Navya, nice. Okay, let's wrap up this as soon as possible. You have good time at your function. Okay, so, so the relation is something like this. So these are the normal goods, right? In case of normal goods, the relationship between income and the demand for the goods. Right. So how is the relationship between income and the demand for the goods in case of normal goods is what is this? So these are demanded, that is the normal goods are demanded in increasing quantities as consumers income increases. Household furniture, clothing, automobiles, consumer durables, semi-durables, etc. fall in this category. Right. If my, if my, if I, I have one car now, if my incre income increases, I'll buy another car. If my income increases, I'll buy another house. If my income increases, I'll buy new clothes. Right? So, the relationship between the income and normal goods, the quantity demanded of the normal goods is direct. No, income increases, the quantity demanded for these goods also is increasing. Now, there are some commodities for which the quantity demanded rises only up to a certain level of income and decreases with the increase in money income beyond this level. Wait a minute. There are some commodities for which the quantity demand will rise with the rise in income but and decreases with an increase in the income beyond this level. These goods are called inferior goods. I'll give you an example. Yeah, let's have another example. Okay. My income is rupees 15,000. Okay. I buy, dude, in 15,000, I have to feed my mom, my dad, my brother, me. I assume my, the host income is only 15,000 rupees. We have to live, we have to buy clothes, we have to pay fees, all of that stuff that is necessary for us to survive. Roti kapla or makan, right? Food, clothing and shelter. And a little bit of comforts. Whatever is available with 15,000. So I buy rupees 30 kg rice. Oh, sorry. Rupees 30, 30 per kg rice. Okay? Or not 30. 20 per kg rice. Okay? How many? Four people will eat? Assume four people in one day eat one kg of rice. Right? So that is 30 kg of rice per month. So 30 kg of rice I have to buy. And buy 30 kg of rice. Okay? So this is the first point. My income is rupees 15,000. And I need 30 kg of rice per month. So I can afford only 20 rupees per kg rice. Okay. So how much is this costing? The 30 kg into 20 is? 600. Rupees 600. I also have to buy dal, salt, pepper, all of that other cooking stuff, oil, and all that stuff. No, I can't spend even any money more than that. I'll have money less for the other products or other needs. Right. So this is the way. Now imagine my income has become 25,000 rupees, 25,000. Now what I'll do, duh, okay, 
now we used to buy only 30 kg of rice because we another 10 10000 increase in rice let's buy some more rice right if anyone wants additional rice what what if 1 kg rice is not sufficient for us now right if, yeah because we are having less income we are adjusting with 1 kg of rice per day two times a meal though only one two times a day you eat rice as you right and 30 kg of rice is not 1 kg per one one meal no so they are having less food for two meals now what they have ha uh, now we have increased money so let's what do, what do we do let's buy this rupees 20 kg 20 per kg rice but how much is the quantity and buy 60 kg no now two times i can have 1 kg 1 kg meal all four of us my income increasing this is what i dream of no look okay, at two times we are eating good food that is good satisfied yes or no so my income is increasing the demand for the product is also increasing now my income became rupees 1 lakh nice or wrong right now will i buy more than 60 kg of rice i'll buy 100 kg of rice now for one month no, no. what will i do with that 100 kg of rice maximum i'll eat 60 kg of rice in a month no but what will i do i shall buy 60 kg of rice but which is worth profit 50 per kg yeah so what did i do as my first my income was 15000 and this is the details 20 rupees kg 20 rupees kg rice and i was buying 30 kg of that rice right and then my income increased to 25000 so the demand for the 20 kg rice what happened to the demand for the 20 kg rice with the rise in income increase increased right so with the rise in income the demand is increasing for that product nice with the even more rise in income what is happening to the demand for 20 kg rice decreases yeah understood so until unless certain price in income the demand for this good is also increasing but even beyond the rise in income if the if any goods demand is falling this good is called inferior good okay if the demand for any product is rising along with the price in income and beyond a certain rise in income the demand for that good falls down all those goods which have this type of characteristics are called inferior goods not leader inferior goods got it yes sir now let's read this thing and understand whether now we can understand yeah there are dem- so these are yeah there are some commodities for which the quantity demanded rises only up to a certain level of income and decreases the quantity demanded decreases with an increase in money income beyond this level now this got meaning yes. understood the lines of whatever this time is trying to say so for the quantity demanded rises only up to a certain level of income and decreases with an increase in money income beyond that level cool and these are called inferior goods for the the same good may be normal for one condition and may be inferior in another right here it is normal in the first two cases the first two, what is a normal good how do you say something is normal income increases demand increases demand for the good increases then this is a normal good right even further increase the demand decreases then this becomes an inferior good the same good only but different situation so the same good may be inferior may be normal for one condition and in these two conditions the good is bec- the good is normal but beyond this condition it became inferior for example millets millets may become an inferior good for a person when his income increases above a certain level and he can now afford better substitutes such as wheat have you heard these terms millets millets ragi java ragi yes yeah. yes sir ragi are millets no yeah right okay. so back then millets were considered to be low income goods because they were very cheap right 
So back then, now again millets have increased demand because the price is low only. But let's see why the in demand of millets have increased on the other way. But so what back then used to happen when people with low incomes used to eat millets, right? And as their income increases, now they want to buy wheat so that they can make atta and roti out of that. And from wheat, can we make rice? No, sir. No, no. no. Rice is a different crop, no? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, so wheat, wheat and millets. Until certain level of income, I am ready to buy millets to satisfy my hunger. But beyond that price of income, why would I buy? Other? I don't buy millets. I don't want to buy millets anymore. I buy wheat. I make chapatis and I make puris and eat. Right. So these are called inferior goods whose demand decreases beyond a certain level of rise in income. Cool. Yeah. These are goods whose demand decreases. D E C R E. What is decrease spelling? E S E. C R E. These are goods whose demand decreases beyond with an increase. Increase in income. Beyond a certain level, right or wrong? Yes. Right. So until now, we've seen three determinants of demand for any for a for a product or service to gain demand. Three things will determine it. One thing is the first thing is the price of the product. The price of that good will determine the demand for that good. The second thing that will determine the demand for this good is the price of the related goods, be it complementary goods or substitutes, right? And then the demand for a certain good or service is determined with the income of the consumer also, right? So income increases, the demand for the good increases. The income and uh, demand relationship is now the further divided into two things. It depends on the nature of that good that we're talking about. Right. If it is a normal good, it has a different relationship. If it is an in, if it is a inferior good, it has a different relationship. Gotcha. Okay. Lovely. And then what is the other determinant of demand? Eight minute. Just a minute. Uh, This is money income. Okay. And then what did we learn about? And what was the other thing? And uh, Where's the okay? It's fine. Yep. And then there's another thing that is determining the demand of any good or services. The tastes and preferences of a consumer, right? The demand for a commodity also depends on the tastes and preference of the consumer, and the changes in them over a period of time. The demand for a commodity also depends on the tastes and preference of the consumer, and the changes in them. In them means in the tastes and preferences over a period of time. Goods which are modern or more in fashion. Command higher demand than goods which are old design or out of fashion. 
goods which are in modern or more in fashion command higher demand than goods which are of old design and out of fashion can you give me an example for these any old fashion goods do you know of whose demand has gone now any old fashion goods maruti 800 have you ever heard of this car called maruti 800 yes sir all of you yes sir ambassador ambassador all of you have heard ambassador yes sir right what happened the taste and preference of the consumer is changing over the time now people are not interested in buying an ambassador i would rather buy a swift or a or any car around whatever my income is right but even if i had money i wouldn't buy ambassador so the demand for a good is not only on the price the price of the related commodities and the income but it is also on the what is the consumer's taste what is he preferring to buy right what are his preferences does he want a sedan car or does he want a hatchback or does he want a multi utility vehicle or does he want a super utility vehicle like like you want xuv or you want creta or you want varna which is a sedan and hatchback is swift right so what is your preference now how would i prefer okay if i was in my town uh, i wouldn't buy a sedan because the town is a small place i can't roam big cars around that so i want a small hatchback like swift or something right which i can take around and get back now when i go when i when i want to travel to city then in city i can happily take around my sedan car right so then i would prefer a longer car like varna ambassador is also sedan yeah and then if i want to go on a trekking or something like that or a picnic with my family where i have to feed a lot of luggage this food there is tent there is other stuff clothes and all that bag and stuff so my small car is not sufficient and so is my sedan i can't take my sedan onto that hill no? right if i take varna onto that hill it might there might be damage so what i'll do i'll i'll find a higher elevated car like creta or scorpio scorpio so the difference between scorpio and creta is that creta is a multi utility vehicle and scorpio is a super utility vehicle scorpio is suv and uh, creta you know all you all of you know creta no creta This is Creta. Have you seen this car? Are you sure? No, sir. This car you see, no? So see, yes, this sir. car is like hatchback only, but in a bigger space, right? Yes. SUV has seating in the back. This only, this is only a five seater. This is multi utility vehicle, right? And SUV, Scorpio, XUV, and stuff. these are super utility vehicles where you can keep you can put more people and even more luggage okay so what do you prefer is also sets the demand for a certain product got it so goods which are of modern or in more in fashion command higher demand than goods which are of old design or out of fashion and then there is something called this demonstration effect or bandwagon effect the consumption pattern of the social groups to which the individual belongs the consumption pattern of the social groups to which the individual belongs neighbors holdings prestige issues this is called snob effect highly priced goods are consumed by status seeking rich people to satisfy their needs of conspicuous consumption this is also called weblen effect let me give you an example i have my mama and my whole grandmother's family in my village so they make good money they're well off family they they have good money to live comfortably and luxuriously but my mama uses a normal bike in the town she uses a normal bike and i asked why don't you buy a good royal enfield or a pulsar or a apache and why do you have this small tvs bike or something so what he says dude i don't require a pulsar or a royal enfield in the small town this is more than enough i i only required to go to the market to get some food i only required to go to the factory or i only required to go to the shop as simple as that i am not going out on a date or i am not going out on a trek or anything like that i don't want a fancy bike 
but then the same guy when he came when he comes to our city from the town right when he comes to the city he takes a royal enfield or he takes a uh, a good car for rent and then he roams around that city right so depending on the so his consumption pattern is depending on what to which the social group this individual belongs right so the consumption pattern is in such a way now uh, if you give 10 lakhs people to fishermen right they won't buy mercedes car or anything like that would they buy would they require mercedes car or stuff no what would they do they would use that money for education of the children or like settle their house or any debts and stuff right so the peop the, the way the people consume money is different according to the social groups and if someone gives me 10 lakhs right now what would i consume it like i'll buy a new laptop i'll buy a good, even good camera and what else i can do with 10 lakhs i'll buy a good bike right i'll buy some clothes but the fisherman will not buy a new laptop a new camera and all of that stuff right so that's what this tell me so the consumption pattern of the social groups to which the individual belongs so you buy stuff to the society that you belong right oh that so see neighbor neighbors holdings or prestige issues i bought a i bought a playstation because i saw it in my neighbor's house see seriously i'm telling you when i was 7th class or 8th class i bought a playstation because my the neighbor kid was also having playstation and he was not allowing me to play right so i i begged my mom for a playstation she gave me it's a different thing that i stopped playing after that but still and no, no, he has a, he also has a playstation i also want a playstation right my dad my dad was thinking of buying a new car so he was like which car do we buy right so i, I, so I was suggesting a higher car like mercedes or something i know that is out of my range i won't buy that right so it totally depends on prestige issue also or if i if i suggest him a very low car also he doesn't want to buy a like a swift or something he wants a good car which is not too costly not too cheap right so why does he don't want the cheaper car prestige issues right so it's not about only the utility or the satisfaction you get from the the product it's also regarding the prestige issues that will determine you to determine the demand of that commodity got that so this is also called snob effect it seems because someone did i also will do that right because that guy bought that 53 inch tv i also buy that 53 inch tv everyone in the apartment has a car i also want a car. i also want a car right this is called snob effect i'm not saying it's good or bad i'm just telling how the human psychology works that was that's what we're learning no psychology human science right so that's how people are accustomed to behave right this is this is an effect that is found in every found amongst us right that's why it became uh, um a fact right so that yeah. so that was taste and preferences that determine the demand for a certain food okay and then we have consumers expectations that will determine a certain that will determine the demand for a certain food how are consumers expectations determining the demand for a certain good did you guys remember recently all around india the prices for onions rose like anything before the covid thing happened remember in june or december or feb was it yeah the onions price was increased a lot no during the last december yes, or november people yes, stand in lines and all not everyone used to get onions you remember that we yes, just passed that yes, season yes right? sir yes sir and what happened what happened because people were thinking that it's going to increase even more and even more and even more let's buy a lot of things now only right today the, the onions prices from 50 became 100 but you are you are expecting that it will become 150 tomorrow right so you'll buy you want to buy more of things at 100 than at 150 no but do you know that if it's going to change to 150 or not no we don't know that it's just the consumer is expecting that it will increase and he is in that expectation is directing to a decision to buy or not so this decision is affecting the demand for that commodity you know the onion right and if the same consumer is thinking that today the good the the price of the good is 100 i am i am expecting that by the next week it will become 50 rupees 
right? So I'll buy minimum now and I'll buy more on the other day when it is low, right? So what is happening? Again, my expectation is determining the demand for the product that I'm going to buy today. So my expectation is that the price will go down. And what is happening with this expectation of mine? I'm taking a decision to buy best onions today. So that's how the demand for the onions was determined by the consumers expectations. Okay, let's read this thing. Consumers expectations regarding future prices, regarding income, regarding supply conditions, etc. In influence influence current demand. So it could be the expectation regarding the future prices like we decided. It could be the expectation regarding the income. Oh yeah, uh, it's been three years. I might get a low, I might get a yeah, promotion and my income will increase. Uh, expecting that my income will increase, my demand for my, I'll determine to buy something. Like, okay, my uh, I can buy this house now because I, I might get a promotion. And expecting that I'll get promotion, the demand for the house is increased now in my perspective so it could be income supply conditions supply conditions is whether people will yeah we can find that good but will i be able to go buy that stuff or not like covid what happened is covid just started off in india what did what did all the news channels or what did the government tell us don't do panic buying right don't just go to the, all of it just don't go to the supermarkets and buy all of that stuff did we listen to this news or not don't do panic buying and thing. Yes. Did you guys hear? Yes, sir. Yes. So it's supply conditions. We don't know whether these things will be available tomorrow or not. They have tomorrow or not. Right? So these expectations will decide a consumer to decide in a certain way that will affect the current demand of a certain product or a service. Clear? Right? Yes, sir. Yeah. If the consumer expects an increase in future prices or increase in income, and shortages in supply, more quantities will be demanded. Increase in future prices, today I'll buy more. Increase in income, I'll, today I'm buying that house, no. The demand for the house increased because I'm expecting that I'm increasing, there's an increase in income. And the shortages in supply. No, 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 no I will not get onions and rice tomorrow, very important. I can't live without eating, so I have to buy all of that today only. I'll buy 50 kgs of rice now only. So any of these three things happens, increase in future prices, increase in incomes and shortage of supply, more quantities will be demanded today, the current demand, right? If they expect a fall in price, they will postpone their purchase of the non-essential commodities and therefore the current demand of them will fall, right? So this is how consumers' expectations is also affecting the demand for a certain product or not, right? So until now, what all did we... Uh, see that will affect our what are the things that would determine till uh, determine our demand till now what are the determinants of demand that we learned till now Saluda what is the first thing that will determine the demand of a product Income. income of the consumer. First thing that will determine the income of the consumer. Size of the commodity. Yeah. First thing that's definitely going to impact the. See, even if, if you're not interested in the price, then the price of related commodities, income and all, you'll not check only, no? I'll not check whether I'm a part of a demand for a Mercedes Benz or not. Because I'm not interested with the price of the product only. Right? So, the price of the commodity. Okay, next. Income of the con customer, consumer. Related goods. Yep. yep. And then we had income of the consumers. And? Taste and preferences. Taste and preferences. Lovely. Yeah, taste and preferences also if, if impact the demand for any good, right? Taste and preferences of the Fine. Based on preference of the consumers. And fifth one? Consumer expectations. Consumer. Expectations also will impact the demand for any product or service. Correct? Yeah, nice. 
and we also have something else. Yeah, there are other factors that will determine or impact the demand for a product, and these are size of the population. Oh my God. Yeah, how is size of the population will determine the demand for a product? Simple enough. What is the Give me a number. What is the population of our country? 1.3, billion people. That is 140 crore people. Right. The assume, assume the population of Australia is 10 crore people. Okay. Let's see what is the population of Australia. Two point five crore people, as of two thousand eighteen. So, uh, tell me one thing that is required for both Australian people and Indian people: toothbrush. All of us will use toothbrush, yes. right? Now, for a toothbrush manufacturing company, where will he have more demand? In India or in Australia? Where the population is more. So that's how population also impacted the demand for a certain product. Yes, sir. yes or no? Yes, sir. Lovely. Then composition of population. Now composition of population means, yeah, you have 140 crore people, but are all the 140 crore people of the same income level, same standard of living, same occupation and all of that stuff? No, sir. No, right. In India alone, we have different level of income people different occupations, different customs, different religions, different traditions, right? Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So composition of people will determine where the product will be sold. If I go to a pure Brahmin community and I start a chicken shop or a mutton shop, <laughs> will I have a demand there? No, sir. No, right? In fact, I'll get sharps and pops. They'll curse me, no? But what if I go to a place where people like Martali, right? Martali all pig shops, chicken shops only are there. Right? So that that's a place where things are okay. So composition of people, you have to see where you are selling this product. As simple as that, right? I can't I can't put a crane showroom in front right in front of this or middle of the city and expect huge demand. Who will buy cranes every day now? I'll have to set, set a shop near near factories, no, where people would buy cranes on a more basis than sit in middle of the city, right? That is composition of people, and then the level of national income and its distribution. What is national income? The total number of goods and services produced in a year. It is not the total number of goods and services produced in the year. It is the value of those goods and services produced. In the year. Yeah, right. You learned it well. I very much know that. So, what is the what is the textbook definition of national income? The sum total of all the factor payments of all the goods and services produced during the accounting year is called national income, right? The aggregated value. Yeah. So. That is national income. That is how much is the money that people have to buy the goods and services that are available for them. How much money that they have. So together, all the money that is ready to buy goods and stuff is the national income. Right. Now it's distribution. What is this distribution? India earns. Okay. Recently, Modi said, no, India's national income is 20 lakh crores. Right. Okay. What is the national income? of India. Oh, 181.10 lakh crores. Lovely, no? The 1920 year, the national income at current prices is 181.10 lakh crores. That is the value of goods and services produced during the country this year. Right? Now, this is the national income. Now, this 181.10 lakh crore is it distributed by 140 crore people? 
181 lakh crores divided by 140 crore people. Is it how? That is how it is distributed. No. 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 Most of that thing money Ambani is only taking. No. <laughs> right. So that is comp. That is distribution of national. Okay, you're saying that your country is producing goods whose value is 181.110 lakh crores, right? But how much of that money is actually being distributed among the people, right? That will impact a demand for a product. Like if you go to a Inox or a good theater, the popcorn is roughly 200 to 300 rupees, right? But if you if you keep that popcorn price at a small theater have you ever gone to small regular single screen theaters there the popcorn is 50 rupees 20 rupees only right so the demand for a certain product is also determined on the in the income distribution right and the reason we don't have a lot of mercedes a lot of cars like america has a lot of cars seriously like every person has a car it because it is it is of like like every person in india has a bike as because it is cheaper or it is affordable for anyone the same way the cars are afford at a certain price where anyone can afford that that's why student also has a car professional also has a car it's only cars 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 and super cars right but in india it's not it's not like that based on the income first you'll get your bike and then if the income is too good then you'll get your car and good car better car better car and super car right so it is the income distribution why we don't have lot of supercars in india because bigger amount of people don't have good incomes and smaller amount of people have huge incomes so that is how the income is being distributed that is why we have less demand for supercars and more demands for bikes right almost every person in india has a bike every family in india has a bike on average yes sir right you guys all of you three have bikes in your house yes sir yeah Yeah. After Ola, we don't need a bike also, or a car also. A bike we might need. We don't need a car, right? Yeah. So that is what is. That is how the national income and its distribution will impact the demand for product. The example of supercars. In India, even though the the value is one eighty one point ten lakh crores, the demand for supercars is low because the income is distributed. The high incomes are distributed within less number. and low incomes are distributed within high number that is why the supercars in india have low demand but the same supercars in america have high demand because their huge number have high income huge high people are high income more people are high income high have high incomes and can afford good cars and stuff cool and the consumer credit facility what is consumer credit facilities emis 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 Right. If you have all the EMIs, credit cards, and all that options, no. Well, yeah, I'll, yeah. Let's buy a TV. Let's buy a phone. Let's buy a car, and I'll pay EMIs for these three things over the next one year, and I'll settle up the things. But had if this option was not there, I would not buy the car on that day, no. I would save the money for one year, and then I would buy what that house, that car, and that phone. So first saving happens, and then I buy that. But had if on the first day I had a consumer facility, like this consumer credit facility, I the demand for that would increase in the first day only. You know, it need not wait till the ten that one year day and then increase the demand for product will increase. So the demand for the product is also impacted by the credit facilities a country or a or a place is having. Cool. So these are all the different factors that determine the. Demand for any good or service. Neither. Can you tell me all the six factors that determine the the good that determine the demand for any product? Income. Income. Price income of the of product. Home. Income of the customer. Consumer. Consumer. Yeah, customer. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Income. Income of the consumer. Price of the product. Price of the substitute good. Okay. Relative product. Okay, price of the related products. Yes. Huh? Okay. The expectations of the consumer. Yes, the like expectations. Yes, exactly. Mm. And what else? What else will determine demand? Taste and preferences. The quantity needed. The taste and preferences. Of the customer. 
ஒரு <laughs> Yes, all of you you have any doubts in, until now yes, all clear can we move ahead yes sir lovely and okay um, what is this demand function the demand function states the relationship between the demand for a product and its determinants so what is the demand function it is the relationship between the demand for the product and its determinants correct us all or correct us all or sure for a Okay, just a moment. Just want to see. Yeah. So the demand function is telling the relationship between the demand for a product and its determinants. So the demand for a certain product is nothing but the function of the price of the commodity, the money income the consumer has, the price of the related sub substitutes, the price of the complementary goods, tastes and preferences, and here yeah, something else is added. advertisement expenditure so he, demand function is nothing but da what is it telling here all these we, we just said right all these determinants will determine the demand for a product right so all these things will mix up this is influencing this much this is influencing this much all the six factors all the determinants that are available will all come into place become kichdi and give us one product oh yes this is the demand for this product how did you tell that this is a function this is how all the determinants function this is how the price of the product influenced it the price of the related product influenced it income of the consumer influenced it the taste and preference of the consumer influenced it the consumer expectations influenced it and all the other factors that are available influenced all of these things together and this is the demand for this product say 10000 phones or 2 lakh cars or 10 10 lakh kgs of rice what is the demand for the rice this year 10 lakh kgs of rice how did you tell that all the functions of its determinants cool that is so it is telling the relationship between what is the demand and its the function of the relationship the function of the determinants a demand function yeah yeah okay sir demand function yeah sir and that is nothing but the law of demand according to the law of demand other things being equal if the price of a commodity falls what happens to the quantity demanded of it then the price price of commodity falls the quantity demanded of it will rise and if the price of commodity rises the quantity yeah. demanded will decrease that is the thing about the law of demand and and one more thing whenever you see something called law in economics right any any time you see law law is not the criminal law or the contract act or anything that is done law is the natural way of how it will respond understood what is law of demand the natural way something will respond so how will the demand re demand respond naturally the demand the law of demand says that if the price of the commodity increases falls the demand rises and the price of the commodity rises the demand falls that is the law of demand anywhere the demand will respond like this or later on right so how do you define so this is the meaning of this law like how what is the law of demand yes yeah, 
but how do you define something the greater the amount to be sold the smaller must be the price correct or wrong the greater the amount to be sold the smaller must be the price true or wrong true or false you want to sell greater number of quantities the price should be no at which it is offered in order to that it may find purchases or you could define it as the amount demanded increases with a fall in price and diminishes with a rising price so this is a better definition no so next time someone asks you how to how how do you define law of demand you say this the amount demanded the amount of quantity demanded is a better term right so the amount of quantity demanded increases when Okay. When the price falls, yeah, the amount of quantity demanded increases with a fall in price, in price. and, and price. diminishes with a rise, rise in price. price, rise of the price. That is how you define the law of demand. That's what we were supposed to learn today. No, first part of unit one, law of demand. We knew this, right? Even yes. though we did not know that it was economics, we knew that if price increases, demand will decrease. If price decreases, demand will increase. But that 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 was nothing but the nature of the demand got it yeah and then we have something called demands schedule yeah what is this demand schedule a demand schedule is a table which presents the different prices of a good and the corresponding quantity demanded per unit of time what is it telling this is a table which has some information what is that information it is the different prices of that goods which presents this table presents the different prices of the goods and the corresponding quantity demanded per unit of time so if if this is if these are different points of time and the what is it what is this telling this is a table that presents different price of the goods and the corresponding quantities demanded at different points of time got it yes sir what is the demand schedule it's just a table what is this table telling the this this table represents different prices and its corresponding quantities at this price how much is quantity demanded at this price how much is quantity demanded 1 rupee how much is the quantity demanded at 3 rupees how much is the quantity demanded so where, where do we get this information from a demand schedule clear the table that gives us the prices and the corresponding quantities demanded at different points of time is nothing but demand schedule and then we have something called sorry dear uh, it's my fault actually uh This, these things are so fixed in such a way because like this only it will happen and i keep changing things in between and yeah so you see this thing at 5 rupees the quantity demanded is 10 if this is the price bar i like access and this is the quantity demanded access This is at five. Ten is demanded. At three, twenty is demanded. At one, sixty is demanded. And what is this? This is called the demand curve. A demand curve is nothing but a graphical presentation of the demand schedule obtained by plotting a demand schedule. Understood? Yeah, understood. Demand schedule and demand curve. Yes, sir. Now, then we have something called market demand schedule. Demand schedule is a table that is representing the quantities demanded at different prices, right? But what is market demand schedule? Market demand is defined as the sum of individual demands for a product at a price per unit of time. it is a sum of individual demands if you are a shop owner right if you are a shop owner if you are a shop owner and i come to your shop right assume nida is a shop owner 
okay me bhavani and navya are the customers of that shop so i require 10 kg of rice okay navya requires 15 kg of rice and bhavani requires another 10 kg of rice right so my 10 kg bhavani's 10 kg and navya's 15 kg are individual demands right so there will be different demand schedule for me there will be different demand schedule for navya and there will be different demand schedule for bhavan and when we refer to market demand schedule for the shopkeeper what is the thing no no from the market i have a demand of 10 plus 10 plus 15 35 kg right so when he when we look from the market perspective what is the total demand for rice in this market 35 kg because there are only three people and they want 35 kg of rice got it if we individually see that is demand schedule and if we together mix everything at the whole of the demand of the market and see that is market demand schedule so what is market demand schedule market demand is defined Hmm. Yeah, you want to read this out? Anyone? It's fine. Market, market demand is de- defined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on. <laughs> market demand is defined as the sum of individual demand for a product at a price per unit of time. Sum of individual demand for a product at a price per unit of time. Okay. In other words, it is the total. quantity that all consumers of a commodity are willing to buy per unit of time at a given price all other things remaining constant it is the total quantity what was our total quantity 35 yes and what was the 35 kg it is the total quantity that all consumers of a commodity what was that commodity we were talking about Right. Yeah, it is the total quantity that all consumers of a commodity are willing to buy per unit of time at a given price. Understood? Yes. No. Yeah. Yeah. And what is market demand curve? Graphical. Difference. See. Okay. Good. We did not see this. Can you see? P Q R. At rupees five, P requires ten or ten units. Q requires eight units. R requires twelve units. The market requires thirty units. So covering these two, only this P is the demand schedule for P. This is the demand schedule for. This is the demand schedule for Q. Q and this is the demand schedule for of R. R. And this is what. total market demand market demand schedule how did i get this market demand schedule but the sum of all the individual demand schedules yes sir no? at 1 rupee i have like 60 35 45 35 45 is how much 80 and 80 plus 60 is 140 right the sum of individual schedules for a product at a price per unit of time at a price per unit of time got it it can be one at one point of time no it cannot be one for one person and two for another person so at a point of time at this price how much is the individual demand and how much is the market demand got it sir yeah and if we plot the market demand schedule on a graph we get the market demand curve got it yes sir so that is what we've learned through this day the whole of law of demand um yeah we've seen what is the meaning of demand what is the meaning of demand the quantity of goods or services the consumers are willing yeah continue and that able to put and able to purchase at various prices during a given period of time yeah it's the it's the is the desire willingness and the ability to buy that product to buy the product right so there should be a desire there should be the ability and willingness okay. let's let's write down these three things you also you also note it down uh these three terms okay there should be desire that i want that thing okay there should be ability ability is means to buy that thing right and there should be willingness to right. use the ability 
correct so demand is nothing but demand is the desire ability and the willingness to use the ability to satisfy the desire constitutes to demand love correct um just a moment right so demand is the desire ability and the willingness to use the ability to satisfy the desire constitutes to demand or demand is the desire ability and the willingness to use the ability to satisfy the desire or the desire yeah the desire ability and willingness use the ability to satisfy the desire constitutes to demand this is a better statement no no and then we have yeah so that is the meaning of demand and then we saw what all other factors determine the demand for any product or service so what are those factors price of the commodity yeah price of the related the related good of the related to income of the customer taste preferences consumers expectations size of the population composition of population ah okay what are those size of the population nice and consumption of the population consumption or composition 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 of the population next national distribution national distribution or in national income distribution national income and its distribution yeah how much is the national income and how is it distributed consumer credit facilities and their interest exactly yeah. and all the other credit facilities consumer credit facilities credit also will impact the demand for the product nice yes sir love oh. and then what did we learn law of demand what is the law of demand and the price increases the demand the quantity the price of the commodity increases okay let me tell you what is the definition or what is the meaning of definition okay the okay. amount nila yes sir can you define photosynthesis for the process by which uh, the living plants can prepare food by itself that's it right yeah. bhavani can you define photosynthesis bhavani okay so nida said the process by which plants plants prepare their own food with the help of sun carbon dioxide earth yeah. navya is adding something with the help of sun carbon dioxide and stuff right and i would say photosynthesis is the process in which the plants use sunlight air and water to prepare their own food with the help of chlorophyll or something whatever it is so definition is nothing but the words you used or words i used to explain that stuff so whatever nida said was nida's definition whatever navya said was navya's definition and whatever i say is my definition but the meaning of the three things are same only no there's two concepts so one is the meaning of the concept and one is the definition of the concept and why do we find definitions of big big people albert einstein this said this alfred nobel said this this guy said that this guy said this this guy defined this thing as that definition is just the words a single person uses no the reason we are finding their 
definitions is that they could like they express the meaning of that concept in the best possible way possible way till now that's it that is the only reason they are they are telling us their definition right if you could tell the meaning of that concept in a better way please feel free to define yourself but if you feel that this is the ultimate expression of this concept dude nothing more nothing less is required then you can use this one a definition is just the words you choose to explain something okay so you could use your own definition or you could use someone else's definition to define the meaning or to convey the meaning of that concept the objective is conveying the meaning of the concept not the definition is correct or not okay my definition is correct for me your definition is correct for you as long as the meaning stays intact okay so what is the meaning of the law of demand the price of a commodity decreases a quantity demand will increase yeah. and the price of a commodity increases the quantity demand will decrease lovely da if price of the commodity increases the demand will decrease and if the price of the commodity decreases the demand will this is the meaning right so every time you want to explain what is law of demand you have to make sure that the other person is understanding these two points right you use however you want to tell so what did how did he define how did uh, the book define or how did the notes define the amount demanded increases with the fall so in he price. said the see definition of law of demand yeah the amount demand that is this fall in price the price and uh, diminishes with the rise in price exactly right so this is this is the meaning of demand let me give you the definition of demand you understood the, me the meaning or the difference between meaning and definition no okay. definition could be whatever you say right make sure that the meaning has value okay and what is the meaning and what is the are the definition of the law of the moon definition for is a better word And what is the definition now? That is how he expressed. Some whoever expressed that expressed it in this way: the demand, the amount demanded increases with the fall in price or diminishes with the rise in price. That's how he communicated to someone when he wanted to tell the meaning of law of demand. The words you choose, the sentence you choose, the, the structures you choose to convey a meaning of something is your definition. As simple as that. Got it? and then the other person has to get the gist of this thing the meaning cool got it guys yes sir now so, tomorrow we shall see rational of law of demand you know what is the meaning of rational see a set of reasons or a logical basis for a course of action or a particular belief so what is the reason that you are believing in this thing okay what is the logic behind this so what is the logic behind the law of demand okay so oh, these are the reasons that why the law of demand is like this that is why price decreases demand increases the price increases demand increases how can you say that this is naturally happening because these are the points that will give us a reasoning a logical reasoning for this response okay so that is rational of demand and then we're going to learn exceptions to the law of demand what is law of demand 
price increases, demand decreases, price decreases, demand increases. And in case of exceptions, what happens? Inverse happens. So what, the, what happens if price increases in an exception? The, the demand also, uh, the demand will increase. And price decreases? The, the demand decreases. The demand will also decrease. That's it. So we'll see in which which conditions the there are exceptions to the law of demand. That means in these cases, this function or this law will not apply. If the price is increasing, the demand will increase more. And there is a small concept called expansion and contraction of demand and increase in decrease in demand. Okay. Not tomorrow, Monday, in the next economics class. Okay. And then we have 